Hey, welcome back to Camp Gadget Reviews. I'm Sean, and today I wanna to show you how I built the bed in the back of my truck. I have an 87 F350. It's a long bed, full size, so the bed is about six by eight, a little bit bigger than that. And it's one of those things where I can fit a queen size bed back there. And when I realized that, I said, well, I need to build something, uh, an actual bed platform where I can store stuff underneath and, uh, and my wife and I can go camping and we can share the bed and we can still store all our stuff underneath it. So I, I actually went through and I was watching a lot of other YouTube videos and I noticed that a lot of them were, they, they seemed to be pretty high budget. I mean, there was, I mean, they're great, they're beautiful setups, but a lot of them for, for an entire bed platform that goes across the whole thing with storage underneath, a lot of people build drawers. They build a whole system, pull out drawers, and that's great. I think that that's, um, if you have the money and the expertise in woodworking, definitely I would say that's the way to go. I don't have those things. Um, so what I did was I kind of did a low budget, practical, yet also temporary. Uh, a big thing for me is temporary, where I can f take everything out of there quite easily in maybe five, 10 minutes at the most. To, uh, to be able to use the back of the truck. I bought a frame instead of making one because I weighed the pros and cons. And if I were to make one out of wood, um, I think that it would warp. Also, that camper top isn't the most secure thing in the world. It's not leak proof. It leaks a little bit on the sides and it goes down into the, you know, the bed of the, of the truck. So I wanted something that wouldn't mess up if it got a little bit of moisture in it, and also something that's light. I mean, if I were to build this in, in wood, it would have been extremely heavy. So I wanted something light, easy to take out of there. I can reach in there and lift that whole thing up. You know, it doesn't fold up, um, it, it just lifts out, and it's super lightweight, but at the same time, it's sturdy. It's super sturdy. It says on the box it holds like 1,750 pounds. I don't think I'll ever test that, but it's good to know. It's good to know that if I ever put, you know, my Geo Metro in there, that it will just stay right on top of there. So between budget-minded, um, easy to pack out and pack in, and practical as far as using only the things that I would use in a camping trip or a, in an everyday situation, you know, those are my big my big thing, my big points, my reasons for making this the way I did. This, right now, it's set up for kind of an everyday driver where I have emergency uh, toe straps and, and you know first aid kit and, and things like that in there. Um, but there's also a lot of empty space that's available for when we go camping. And when we do that, I'll bring, you know, more towels and, and like, you know, more campy stuff, you know, like chairs and, and tents for the kids, of course. And I want to make sure that it had that room in there to where I could also throw that in there. And I do, it's, it's got tons of space under there. I mean, it's a six by eight bed, uh, truck bed, and the top is, is just sleeping. So you can imagine six by eight by 12, you know, it's six by eight long and then 12 inches tall underneath that, that bed platform. That's tons of space. So I'll show you all that in a second. First, I'm going to show you how I put together the frame. And then from there, I'll show you kind of how I finished it out, how I did the totes under the bottom, what sizes I had, and then um, how I insulated the sides. I have this, uh, that, you know, reflective bubble wrap stuff that comes in a big roll, just pretty much coated the whole inside in pieces that can all be taken down easily. And I'll have links to all these items in the description so you can click through and you can check it out for yourself and see um, if this is something that's in your budget. You know, I would say, that to in total, I spent between the frame, the mattress, the totes, I'm not gonna count the, um, the bedding and stuff like that because we already had that, and even the, the bubble wrap uh, insulation for the, the sides, I would say maybe $350, maybe. And you know what's funny is the totes cost way more than I thought they would, I, and I, I probably overbought a little bit, but I got, I spent probably $150 in those totes alone. So you know, maybe half of the budget was just for those totes. But a couple of them uh, are really high quality and there's some cheap ones in there, but I'll show you all that in a second, but let's get to the beginning of this build. All right, so today I'm gonna build my bed in the back of my truck. You can see I have a couple boxes here. This here is the back of my truck. Um, as you can see, I use it a lot. I still use it 
for getting hay for my cows and everything. That's actually what I did today. This was really clean before uh, before I got hay today. This right here, this is a 14 inch platform bed with steel slats, queen size, that'll fit in the back of that truck just fine. That's kind of what it'll look like right there. You know, just a basic little frame. And then on top of that, I'm gonna throw on this six inch memory foam mattress. Now this isn't a complete memory foam, it's only like a one inch memory. And the bottom part is, it's actually a three part um, mattress, but the bottom part is a firm mattress. So, so it's not completely uh, memory foam. I know memory has a lot of problems with um, when it's cold, it's like a rock until you lay on it and then you sink into it and it's not, it doesn't work very well. But this is just uh, one inch of it is memory. And I'm gonna have to do a little bit of modifications to the legs, at least one side because of these, uh, these tire humps here. So we'll see how that goes, but a queen size will fit in here no problem. And then I'm going to get some, um, some temporary totes that will slide under the bed. And then on, the, on that end over there, kind of like a headboard area, it will, I'll be able to put some, some pretty big totes over there, probably about 20 inches. I'll have about 20 inches to spare after the bed's in here. So I'll, you know, I'll get the bed right up to the end here and then down there it'll be uh, kind of a storage area. So I'm excited to see how this goes. I planned it out on paper, planned it out in my head, which seems to work better sometimes, and uh, we'll get this all put together. As you can see, this fits in here really, really well. Queen size bed, look at that. So what the modifications I'm gonna have to do, that leg that's laying right there is, I didn't even realize it was gonna be so easy up here. Because that thing comes off, on both sides they come off, and I can cut them, I can measure them easier and cut them to fit over those wheel wells right there. Let me show you. See, this will actually fit right in there. Those two bolts, it'll fit right in there. So I'm gonna have to measure that tiny distance right there and cut this to fit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this up here on the ridge and I'm going to use a level. I can't really do this with two hands or with one hand, but put a level here and go straight across and just kind of make sure that I'm getting it pretty level and uh, and then I'll go once I get that leg up there like that I'll go from this part the resting part here and make this level and then I'll mark it see if I can hold that with my leg so then I'll go like this and I'll mark it there at the bottom of that level which should be where the bottom of this leg will go as long as they're both level should work out there's only one, one chance of doing this, um, so I hope I get it right. Now the good thing is too, I'm just gonna chop this with my chop saw, my metal chop saw. And then these down here, you can see there's like a plastic um, protector thing right there, and I can actually pop that out and then put it back over the part where, wherever I cut it, put that back over there. So it'll also not dig into this, which I'm not, I don't care about this. 
this uh, bed liner at all, but it would be nice for, uh, you know, if you're doing something, maybe you have a little bit better of a bed liner or a better surface, you can put that plastic piece back on and it will uh, it'll protect and it'll help probably grip it a little bit better too. There you go, it worked. I cut that down and I actually ground it, ground off the, uh, the burrs and everything. And then as you can see, I put that little plastic piece right back on the bottom. It was super easy to do. I popped it out with a screwdriver and then put it back on this part right here. And it is level. All I have to do is put those bolts in there and then I'm gonna do the other side also, but that one I'm gonna measure separately. I'm not gonna, you know, since this thing is so wobbly and old and not reliable, I'm going to measure it. I'm not gonna cut it the same size as this one. I'm gonna measure it, it on its own, its own side, its own thing. So I'm really happy with how that worked out. I'm going to get these bolts in here, cut the other side, get that one done, and then start putting the slats in here that go across all the way down. And then I'll get the mattress on here and we'll see what it looks like. Alright, that's the frame all together. You can see how the slats go um, every few inches all the way down. Super, super sturdy. Not going anywhere. It even marks it. It says middle bar. There are two that go in the middle. I don't know why, but... That's the way they have that set up. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is put, um, I'm going to put some plywood on top of here. I don't have to really. I think it'll be fine without it, but just to distribute the weight a little bit more easily, maybe. All right, there it is. That's the, uh, the finished product with a little bit of uh, random spare bedding I had. So we have right here, we have the mattress and it isn't fully inflated yet. The, uh, the instructions say it'll take about 48 hours to fully inflate, but it's a six inch, six inch mattress, and I'd say it's almost there already, so that's not too bad. It's super comfortable. I went on there, and it's super, super comfortable. Um, that is the, let's see, six inch memory foam mattress. I forgot the brand, but I'll put it in the, uh, in the description for the video. And here we have the frame, which is a 14 inch metal platform bed with steel slats that's a queen size 80 by 60 that's the uh, part number skew all that kind of good stuff so you've got let's see let's measure it even from the top of that ridge um, right there you got 12 inches look at that and I probably won't even push that maybe I'll get something that's like 11 and a half or well I'll see what they have available at Lowe's um, and then across this way Let's see, let's go like this. Now we're looking at, you know, where that wheel well is right there. So we can't, let's go in a little bit, probably about right there. 21 inches to be safe, you know, 21 inches to get something in there perfectly, uh, just straight in there. You know, I, I, I was thinking about cleaning this out and I know people are probably looking at this going, oh my God, that's so nasty. This is all from today. This is from hay from today. We got some uh, hay for our cows, which you can probably see. No, they're not out right now. Um, so this is all pretty fresh, but this is a, you know, this is an old truck and this is an old bed liner and it's cracked. You can see it's cracked right in, right around there, right along there. So it's broken up, um, which is good for drainage, you know, because it does leak a little bit from one of these windows and it kind of goes down and drains right through there. But um, I don't want to have to worry about cleaning this out all the time and hay isn't really the worst thing in the world So this is going to be something that um, the totes everything is going to be either in totes or raised up like on this bed There's not really going to be anything touching anything that that's important touching the ground down there Like I said, this is a multi-purpose truck. I'm you know, if I want to take it to go get hay I'm going to take all this out and the the frame itself is 35 pounds so I can just tear that out real quick I'm not gonna take it apart I'm just gonna take it out put it in my garage uh, take the mattress out take all the totes out and then go get hay you know it shouldn't be a big deal um, and then when we uh, when we camp when we use this for camping we can put it back together pretty easily so there you have it all right so here we go here's the finished product we are all done in here I have the windows all insulated uh, kind of a makeshift insulation up there with velcro and those rolls are two foot rolls so they work out really well with uh, insulating the entire 
wall of the camper shell. And then let's see, I get over here. I don't really have a much more of a wide angle lens here, but it's hard to see in here. This is the window that goes to the cab. And this two foot roll here actually works out really perfectly. It fits into the window uh, frame at the bottom and then I can stuff it up there at the top. A little bit of light comes in, but it's not bad. So there's no Velcro needed for that piece. This piece over here, same thing, Velcro on the side, not a big deal. Um, I have this mattress here and some old sheets and blankets that we had stored away. Um, this is a six inch, I showed before, a six inch memory foam with the, um, the more firm foam underneath. It's been great, I slept in it twice now, and it's been great. It's super comfortable. I would even recommend this for a bedroom maybe. <laughs> I think it's, it's that great. Now, over here, I wanna show you this before I get out of here. This is makeshift, well, it's not makeshift, but it's rudimentary, I guess. That's how you'd say that. Um, this is the kind of headboard section. And I might paint this because I didn't want to have any wood in here, but this was just way too convenient and I had this wood already. So I cut it down and I made a, a little cover here for uh, storage for blankets and pillows and things like that. So all the pillows and blankets will go in here when it's not in use. And then when the bed is in use, these will be empty. And these are just trash cans. These are, I forgot what size these are, but they're about two feet tall and they fit perfectly in here. Four of them across, one, two, three, four, yeah. And so when the pillows and blankets are out of here and we're sleeping in here, we can put other things in here like my Rock Pals 300 watt portable power station can go in there. And, and then, you know, the wire could come up here, it could charge phones, things like that. My wife was really big, and I, I agree with this, on having some kind of flat surface here, here by our heads so that we could put flashlights and um, our phones and, you know, whatever else it can all fit up here. I think it's a great idea. Now, this whole thing, I would say, is maybe 90% done. I'd like to put some lights in here, I'd like to put some 12 volts in here and see how that does. This, as you can see, is all rubber sealed. So it doesn't leak, it, uh, it's super flexible, and it's also, it kind of insulates it with that, uh, with that rubber on there. I love it, I think it, it's a great idea. Let me show you how easy this is to pull down. And see, that's another thing, is I can pull this down, roll it up, and put it in those, uh, either put it on the side of the mattresses or put it inside those trash can things there. Um, there's my dirty window out to the cab right there. Now I'm going to get out and show you what's underneath this bed. Now the way I set this up, I didn't do anything fancy with drawers and um, you know this is an old truck. It's not really something that I want to build too much into. I'm going budget here, I'm going simplicity, I'm going ease of use. Now this is cheap cordage, you know, this isn't the survival cordage. This is just something that I bought at the dollar store to uh, to use for something like this. So what I do is I'll, I have it hooked to the back. There's three tubs here, I have it hooked to the one in the back. And you see how it pulls straight out. And what I've done is I have this right here you can see that this is one of those uh, cord ties I think they call these you can get them on Amazon like 10 for six bucks or something like that super cheap um, I got this so that I can wrap it around everything kind of do like a bolo tie thing where you tighten it on the uh, on all three of them now I am running into a little bit of a problem because it does fall down still I might get something some kind of little plastic uh, you know, they make those little plastic hooks for picture picture frames and they have really good adhesive. I'll probably stick some of those here on the side, something to put the cord through to keep it up. But even with this down like this, it still works. You can still pull these all the way through. This one here probably fits the best out of all of them. This is a 50 quart uh, Mainstays, which is Walmart brand. So if you're looking, let's see, it is a 10.77 high which for this bed 
you know, it gives you a couple tiny inches on top, but I think that's good because you want some play. So if you're looking for something that's going to fit perfectly in here, in here and be cheap, that's these right here. And then second I have, these are from uh, the dollar store, I believe. Super cheap, these are actually cheaper and cheaper construction. Uh, these are 54 quart, which sounds like it might be bigger, but I think the way they measure it, it's a little different, but these are 11 inches high. So these fit really well too. Then this last one here, this is my heavy duty one. This is the one that is, has the locking lid. It's, I want to put the heavy duty one in the back. And it also has this frame where I was able to tie these cords onto so that I can pull it back and forth and it won't damage, you know, damage the, uh, the container itself. So that would be my advice to you, is to use your sturdiest one with the sturdiest frame in the back, uh, as long as it's not something that you're going to be needing to access a lot. You know, this is the stuff that I, well, like blankets and things like that. Now, right now it's empty, but my other one on the other side, I have this exact twin of all of these on the other side. When I need to access that, um, this one is in the back. And I think just because it's sturdier and it can pull the other ones up, and I think it, it works out better. Uh, it's hefty brand and it's uh, 52 quart, which is, you know, the same size as these other ones, except it's flatter, kind of spread out more longer. So it works out well for uh, bigger tools. I'll show you in the other one what I have in there. So let me know if you have any questions about this build. I'd love to answer any, anything you have. I know I probably didn't touch on everything. There might be something that you see that I didn't talk about. So yeah, throw those comments down below and I'd be happy to answer them. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it gave you some good ideas for your own budget truck camper build. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments and let me know about your own truck camper build and how you did it. If you did something different or especially if you used one of my ideas for your own build. Let me know. And uh, remember to hit like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.